Greetings, I'm Maleficious, and today I'm playing Griftlands. Yeah, Arcanium is on the back burner for the time being, at least until they fix that one boss being completely invulnerable. So, I'm replacing one early access roguelike deck builder with another early access roguelike deck builder. Because, yeah, that's essentially what Griftlands is. And... Yeah, I've already sunk a little time into this, so I'm going to have to go ahead and st start a new run. Um, yeah, so when you start the game for the first time, the only character you'll have available is Sal Igderic, the bounty hunter. You don't get Rook until, well, partway into Sal's story, and I'm not entirely sure how we get the last character, maybe by playing as Rook. But, yeah, let's go ahead and start again as, um... Okay. Yeah, start a new run as Hunting Cassio. Sal escapes a life of servitude to claim the ultimate bounty and get her revenge. Okay, and then, um... This is how it works. You actually have two decks. You have a battle deck, which has all your cards for combat. And you have a negotiation deck for when you're trying to convince someone to do something. Um, there's also different card sets. Uh, as you play and as you fail, you gain experience. Well, you gain experience Last whenever a run is. someone it. made your life miserable, you kept tabs, called in favors, and stayed alert. You took them down, and climbed out of the gutter they kept you in. Cassio's no different. Okay, yeah. Fish is waiting for you, her hip cocked against the bar. Long time, Sal, but it feels like I just saw you. Guess I ain't changed that much, huh? Some things don't, and knowing you, there's one thing you're after that bounty. You do some jobs today, and I promise I'll help you out tomorrow. For now, take this to welcome you home. So you have a choice here. Uh, I can take a coin purse, which will gain 100 shills. That's the currency. Uh, I could get a faded journal, which would allow me to upgrade a negotiation card. That's pretty good. Or I could get a triage kit, which would give me two copies of healing vapors into the battle deck. Uh, healing Vapors applies 6 Mending, and Replenish, Destroy after 1 use. Okay, um, yeah, I'll explain things more as we get into them. Um, for now I'm going to go ahead and take the 100 shills. Always useful. Uh, I could ask about stuff, might as well, since I'm going to assume that you may not have played Griftlands, and so... Okay, so let's ask about Havaria. Help me get my bearings. It's been a long time since I was last in Havaria. It's dirty and broken like always. If debt brokering was bad when you were a kid, it's worse now. Half the population is indentured, and them that hold contracts sell them to pay off their own. No wonder customs was so uptight on my way back in. Must be a lot of fraud. That ain't the half of it. The Admiralty is pushing for an official annex. Oh yeah, um, words that are highlighted in blue, you can mouse over them and, yeah, learn more. They'll train Admiralty. They'll train military force occupying Murder Bay. They want to make everyone real they'll train citizens with paper and everything. In Havaria? You're joking. Yeah, Havaria, a largely unsettled continent on the western side of the Hessian Sea. They say it'll stop illegal debt brokering. Now anyone with a hand in labor contracts is real ornery, from the poor to the powerful. You can imagine the reaction. I can. Okay, let's ask about the Annex. The Annex can't be a popular move. Most come here to get away from the Admiralty. It ain't. Both the Spree and the Cult are in arms about it. The Spree because they're criminals, the Cult because they profit off the labor more than anybody. Okay, the Spree are a largely... Uh, a loosely organized collection of bandits, crime rings, and legal debt brokers, and the cult, 
The cult of Hesh, the dominant religion in Havaria, whose adherents worship Hesh, an abyssal jellyfish god. No need to tell me that. The cult's holding a big shindig in a few days, their usual wheelin' and dealin' in the name of the divine. Word is the Admiralty is going, going to use it to make their proposition mandatory citizenship. It's going to need to be a mighty good pitch to convince the cult, and I wouldn't put it past the spree to set fire to the whole affair if they can. Fish casts a dour eye over the bar, like it's a garden on the near side of winter. Suffice to say, kid, tensions are real high. You'd be smart to keep your head down instead of looking for trouble. Okay, we can ask about fish. Ah, uh, yeah, fish men away. Yeah, whatever. The former bounty hunter and current owner of the Grog and Dog. So, what do I owe you for this fish? A cut of my takings? Hesh, no. I left my bounty hunting days behind me. I owed your parents once. I don't like leaving debts unsettled. Even to dead folks. They were decent people, Sal Fallon. Watch you don't end up like them. Yo, know, even when you pay off the debts, the Derek still owns your name? I'm an Ick Derek now. Or so they tell me. The Derek's both the offshore Lumen platform and the indentured laborers who work there. And Ick Derek, the surname given to all indentured workers consigned to the cult's offshore Lumen Derek's. Yeah, that's some messed up bladder rack, though. Yeah. You can ask about Cassio. Cassio Tajarak, a powerful crime lord who earns her fortune in illegal debt brokerage. You lined up work for me real fast. You some kind of mover here? Nah, I just know people. People know me. You don't need to go after Cassio, kid. I have enough work to keep you busy. I spent my childhood in a lumen pipe because of her. Now she's worth more money than either of us can count. Lumen is a biofuel harvested from the ocean floor, monopolized by the cult of Hesh, and harvested by indentured labor. And she's more dangerous than either of us can figure. We go after her, and she'll clap back with a knife for each kidney. I may have extras to spare, but you only got two. I worked a lifetime. I worked off a lifetime's debt in ten years just so I could get back here and sell the score. If you were my friend, you wouldn't be telling me to drop it. Oh, Hesh, that ain't what I meant. You know it ain't. Yeah, Hesh of the Dark, the cult's god of the abyss, believed to live deep under the ocean. I'll give you a roof, a bed, and at least one good meal a day. You live your life the way you want. It's yours. I'll pay you back. I know. Let's get you to work. Okay, that's everything we can ask about right now, which has given us a bit, good bit of lore. Anyway, we can get work from Fish. I got people in my pocket who owe me a favor. Lux, Topo, and Alan. They're easy people to find. Uh, Lux is a spree thug. Topo is a Jake smuggler. And Alan is a civilian wealthy merchant. Tell them I sent you, and they can settle their tabs by giving you work. Get that done, and I'll get you a plate of popped Oshnu eyes on the house. Oshnu are domesticated giant snails used for food, transport, and entertainment. So he got you. Bless your warty hide fish. I'll hold you to that. And so here's the game. Well, well, here's the map. And this honestly feels a lot like Clay's Invisible Ink, where they give you a choice of missions and you have to pick one to execute. Uh, but our options right now are Repo Person, Topo's business per partner Chake has gone missing with the buyer's money, find Chake and complete the sale before the buyer gets angry. Focus on this is negotiation, difficulty is one star, rewards are a starting bonus, we get a card to pick, we pick a card to help us in the quest, we get 60 shills for completing, and we'll be able to upgrade a negotiation or battle card. Uh, we could do private security, Again, one star difficulty and focuses battle. Alan has heard that bandits are coming to rob her store and is looking to, for help defending her property. Again, we'll get a starring bonus. We'll gain 60 shills and a bonus payment of 30 shills. Or we could do secret shopper. One star difficulty and focuses negotiation. Lux has a package ready at Better Living Chemists but can't pick it up. Again, starring bonus. And rewards are 50 shills and a copy of Admiralty Requisition which is um, a zero-cost battle card that allows you to draw three cards and destroys after one use. 
Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do private security to show off battle first. Okay, so, uh, these are the people in this location. We've got Allo the guard. Yeah, it's clear at a glance that Allo dislikes her job. Maybe making it a little more pleasant might earn you some traction. Watch yourself. So we could try to convince her to eject a patron, but she's only willing to do that for her friend, so we're neutral with her right now. Yeah. So we can't get her to do anything. Uh, Crad is in here. You meet Crad. He's a Jake's lifter. What was that thing? Another day in the... or she. Another day in the feud. But the main thing is, uh, we have to speak with Alan, who's the proprietor of the location and has a quest. Alan's prices are fair, even when the skies aren't. Be careful. What are you on about then? So we could buy cards from her, which we could. Uh, okay, so this would. We could spend our shields to add these item cards to our battle deck. Um, but I'll get on that later. So let's go ahead and start the quest. Where it is you need some help? Huh. Yeah, and you look like you could cut it. One of those spree types was sniffing around my shop yesterday, like they were casing the joint, you know? I got my guard to chase them out, but I know how those scum operate. They'll be back. Alright, so go ahead and accept. And so here's the starring bonus. I can pick one of these three cards to add to my battle deck. Uh, tackle does three to five damage and can gain and you gain two defense that's not bad uh, blade mouth beating does one to two damage apply two bleed per attack if this card was improvised attack three times hmm that might not be bad and last rate two to four damage and apply for bleed so I don't know it might be going bleed heavy uh, let, I'll go ahead and take blade mouth beating it'll be nice later and of course um if you don't want any of the cards, or you think you have too many cards in your deck already, you can decline and get 10 shills instead. Yeah, skip the card and gain 10 shills. This might be the best option sometimes. Before the spree arrive, you'll pro you probably want to check in with my guard, Allo. I'm not sure what they said to her yesterday, but she's been acting strange ever since. Ooh. Okay, we can engage in a negotiation to try and get, s to get some supplies from Alan. I'm putting my neck on the line to protect you. Do you have anything that might help with that behind the counter? You want something for free? So here's how negotiation works. It's, um... It consists of... Each side has a core argument, which is the large thing here. If you manage to reduce the resolve on the core argument to zero, you win. If you reduce your opponent's core argument to zero resolve, you win. But if your resolve is reduced to zero, you lose the neg... You lose the argument, and worse, you can't engage in any further negotiations until you regain resolve. Uh, so we've got cards here. The purple ones are manipulate cards. They allow you to do various effects. For example, these deflection cards say apply one, co apply three composure. Composure acts as defense in the negotiation. And uh, we can see here in the inner outer circle are the active arguments. So Alan's core argument is a proposition. It'll add a kickback card to my draw pile at the end of her turn. Kickback is a zero cost attack that does two to five damage, but forces us to pay five shills. Here in the inner circle, we can see what arguments she's about, well, intents, she's about to execute. So this one will occur in one turn and will cause four resolve damage to one of your arguments. You can see that up here that we're going to take four damage from her intent. Oh yes, down here we have our actions. So we have three actions per turn right now. All of these cards, the action cost in the upper left. Action Cards can have an action cost from zero to three or more. Um, these green cards are diplomacy cards. They mostly are attacks. And so these fast talks do one to three damage. So it's a random amount. And that only did one damage, unfortunately. But there is a way to manipulate that. So anyway, once you've used up your actions, you have to end your turn. You'll discard any cards left in your hand, but you'll draw a new card based on your draw amount. So right now we draw five cards per turn from our negotiation deck. 